Previously, we've set up our key bindings for our Blender interaction. So what I wanted to focus on in this video is changing the starting file. And also this is going to be specifically fixing some Blender to Unreal issues as well regarding scaling, uh, direction and things like that. So by the end of this video, we're gonna have our Blender set up completely. So whenever we create any new project, we won't need to change any settings and we can just get straight into modeling. So the very first thing that I want to highlight is when you come into a new Blender file, you'll be greeted with the standard cube, the light and the camera. And a lot of times you'll notice that if you're following a tutorial or looking at somebody else working in their project, the very first thing they do is they hit A, which is to grab everything, hit X and then delete. So X is to delete and that will clear the scene up. Now, a really good thing to do to avoid needing to do this every single time you open the project is do that once. So follow those steps I've just given. We're gonna go over to file in the toolbar and we're going to go to defaults and save startup file. So it will give us a, a check, just say, is this okay? Is that definitely what you want to do? We'll reconfirm, save startup file. And this means now that whenever we come back into Blender, we have a completely empty project and we can go from here and not need to worry about removing the things that already exist. Now we're actually gonna change this again in a moment, but this is pretty much the setup that you'd want if you're using Unity, Godot, um, or even Unreal. But like I said, there are a few extra steps we need to take for getting this to be completely compatible with Unreal. So for Unreal, just a little bit of uh, explanation of why we're gonna be changing these things and why I'd recommend doing it as your startup defaults as well if the main target platform is gonna be the Unreal Engine. The main issue is that Blender, by default, if we come down here and go to the context scene button, we've got our units. Now, Blender by default has its unit scale set to one metric meter. So whenever we create a new object, uh, which would be say a cube, we can get the information about the cube and we can see that it has a standard dimension of two by two by two, so two meters. Unreal has a standard units system of centimeters. So to accommodate for this, what we're going to do is in the context menu, we're gonna keep this to be metric, but we're gonna set the unit scale down to 0 0.01. So that now matches the Unreal scale. And we're gonna leave that as meters rather than changing uh, the actual standard metric system. Now this means that creating things for Unity, Godot and things like that are still gonna be exactly the same. But this also means that when we export things into Unreal, we're not gonna get weird scaling issues. Now, if you've worked with Blender and Unreal before, you may be thinking that you haven't actually had any of these issues, and it could be true. It just means that you haven't worked with skeletal meshes. As soon as you start working with armatures in Blender and export them as a skeleton to Unreal, then the skeleton actually does get scaled correctly and becomes tiny, which means your animations become almost invisible because they're scaled down to 0 0.01, but the mesh will still be perfectly fine. So leaving the unit scale at one does actually work for things like props and any standard static mesh that doesn't have a bone structure. As soon as you start animating things though and giving the object bones, then you will get some weird scaling issues. It can be very confusing uh, and this is a good way to solve it. Uh, and then this will work for everything, whether it just be a static mesh or a skeletal mesh. Now, the next thing is that we can see here, the actual viewport is now looking a little bit small. So if we recreate a cube, uh, you can see that we don't get the full grid in view, which can be a little bit weird, um, as well as the grid being absolutely huge in comparison to the cube. So the reason for this is we need our menu over here. So this is usually drop down. Um, so if you don't already have this open, you can open this by pressing N or this little arrow just here. We want to go to the view tab and we want to change the end focal region to something like 500 should be perfectly fine. So we can now see that we can uh, correctly see the grid off into the distance. It's just because we've changed our units, the focal distance changed as well. Uh, now, another issue that we're getting here is when I create a new cube, we can see that the dimensions are actually being scaled by this amount as well. Now that's just because I actually had a cube already created when I made these changes, which I shouldn't have done. Hopefully you weren't following along that bit and that will actually resolve itself when you close and reopen Blender. And I just to ex give another example is that uh, we can see I've got my cube here, which I've created by pressing shift and A, which is to add a new object, and then going and selecting cube, and that's creating really small meshes. Now, if I choose any other shape that I haven't already added whilst I was making this change, so if I shift A and create a 
sphere, we can see this is back to its standard two by two meters. So it's not gonna be an ongoing issue. It's just because I was uh, demonstrating that whilst I was making the actual change, which I shouldn't have done. But like I said, once you've saved the preference act, close Blender, open it back up, it will all be perfectly fine. Now, before we do that, there's a few other things that I want to demonstrate uh, and that we're gonna change very quickly. So I'm gonna make a sphere just to demonstrate the scaling issue again. So this is now back in line with the, uh, the grid size properly. And remember, we've just changed our view end length over here. Now we also want to do that in a few different tabs. Now the top of our Blender toolbar now has most of the tabs that we'll be using commonly. So by default we'll be in the layout workspace. Another one that we're going to use quite a lot is modeling. Now if we go to modeling we can see again the first thing is that we are inside of the object. We're very very close to the grid. So I'm going to press N again and I'm going to go down to view and I'm going to change the endpoint again to 500 here rather than 10. I'm going to press on the sphere and press F and this is just going to zoom us back out a little bit here. You can do that by using the will to zoom in and out as well. The main thing is that we're not going to start inside of the objects that we're working with in the future. Similarly, this will be the same for many of the workspaces. So I'm going to go to sculpting and I'm just going to repeat the process for all of these that I think we'll be using fairly often. And for all of these, I'll have this playing in the background, uh, probably sped up a little bit, but for all of these, I'm using the same key bindings. So it's N to open the tab on the side, and I'm just now scrolling out using the mouse wheel so that I'm at a decent position. And this isn't actually going to take too long. We don't need all of them. We don't need things like shading, uh, rendering. It's going to be things uh, we want the animation, and that will probably be the last one that we need to change. Okay, so if those changes made, that is all of the viewport stuff kind of taken care of now. So this is something, like I said, that we don't want to have to change every single time that we come in and work on a project. So what I'm going to do now that I have these, we have our units set correctly to 0 0.01 and we have our focal length updated to account for this. So I'm now going to go back to file, go back to defaults, and I'm going to save the startup file again. So now whenever we come back into Blender, all of the scaling, our focal distances and everything will be taken care of. Uh, and in fact, before I do that, I'm going to get rid of the spheres. I don't want that in all of my future projects. Just save that one more time. And then I'm quickly going to close down and reopen Blender just to show you what you should now expect. Okay, so I've just opened Blender again. We can see here I've got the new pop-up. Uh, and inside of the viewport, we can tell that there are no pre-populated objects. Uh, the units have stayed at a metric uh, one centimeter, essentially. And under the different windows that we have, all of the viewports are still uh, nicely set to 500 so that we can see everything that we'll be working with. So that covers setting up the default file for Blender and specifically as well, a few little fixes and tweaks to make this work seamlessly with Unreal when you are now creating new objects in Unreal. One other thing I mentioned is that if I come back in and create a cube, this will also now be the correct dimension of two meters by two meters. So this is all now exactly the same as if we hadn't done it essentially, but when it comes to putting things into Unreal, it will save a lot of headache going forward. So I'll leave that video here for today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification if you are subscribed. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.